What is up, YouTube? It's your boy, The Walk Seventy One, PlayStation with a Four, and I am here with another video for you guys. And these are one of the kind of videos I wanted to do, which is just like a wrestling discussion talk thing. And uh, this video is going to be focusing on WWE's Cruiserweight division and why it's failing, and possibly how you could fix it to make it better. So let's get into it. Let me give a little backstory on the Cruiserweights for people who don't really pay attention to WWE. So over the summer, you know, WWE had the Cruiserweight Classic. It's described as probably one of the best tournaments WWE has done in a long time. All the matches were incredible. You had the incredible match with Kota Ibushi and Cedric Alexander, which was a four star match from Dave Meltzer, I believe. Then you had the, the, the what was it, round one closer with Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano, you know, the story between that. Then you had the other good matches like Kota Ibushi and Brian Kendrick or uh, TJ Perkins and Johnny Gargano or the finals even was a good match between uh, Grand Matalik and TJ Perkins. Just All of the matches were great. They were all great. Most of them told good stories and it really prevailed. So then during the brand split, you know, WWE decided to announce that they were going to have the Cruiserweight division and it was going to be exclusively on Raw, the three-hour show instead of SmackDown, the two-hour show. So at this time, this is right towards probably the middle or to the end of of the actual cruiserweight classic so this one the cruiserweights were hot off of the ground they were like up there like people were in love with the cruiserweight classic so when raw said they were going to add it it just made the experience better for us to see more of the cruiserweights and to see them more because it was a giant question mark for a minute as to why what, what's going to happen next after the cruiserweight classic because most of these guys that were in the cruiserweight classic weren't even signed to wwe they were just guys from the indies who wwe were impressed by picked them up put them in the cruiserweight classic so we didn't know what was going to happen next and then we got it and now i'm going to talk about why it's failing starting with number one wwe is making the cruiserweight division more than what it really is they're hyping it up more i say this because the the cruiserweight division it's its own entity. It's its own division. It's it's its own division. So, yes, you, you should treat it that way. But you the way WWE has done it really messes it up. See, what the WWE does for the Cruiserweight division, they literally set up the ring like during commercial break for anything and everything Cruiserweights. What they'll do is they'll take off the ring aprons, I believe, and put Cruiserweight ring aprons. The ring itself has been replaced with like cruiserweight logos on the like the like the end of the square circle. The the ropes are purple. They change the logos up and everything and literally make it its own entity, like its own brand or whatever, just for three minute matches or a certain segment, which is crazy to me. There was a segment on Raw, I forgot which segment it was, I think it was Rich Swan talking, and literally they set up the whole set for nothing, just like a three minute segment. It doesn't make any sense, and I feel like WWE really messed up on that. I get it. You want to make Cruiserweights its own entity, but if you want people to care about it, you have to put it and make them just as important as everything else. You don't have to sit up here and change everything to make them feel special because, to me, that's a sign that the Cruiserweight division is like what the Divas matches were a long time ago. You set the ring up, that gives me a sign that, oh, I can go to the bathroom or, oh, I can go get something to drink. I can get t-shirts or whatever because... Obviously, this doesn't matter. It, it's just like a three-minute whatever just to cool down the crowd. That's what the Cruiserweights are now. It's like a cool down. Number two, the matches. Okay, so we have matches in the Cruiserweight division that have been pretty good, but they haven't been on Raw where you mainly see them. Most of the good Cruiserweight matches have been at pay-per-view such as Survivor Series, Kalisto versus Brian Kendrick. Um, let's see, what else match did we have? Uh... I don't. I, I that that might be the best cruiserweight division match, and that's a problem. To be honest, that that is a problem. I can't think of a really good cruiserweight match as Kalisto and Brian Kendrick. It just showed how good the cruiserweights can go. On Raw, we get these certain matches. We get three minute matches. It's either a six man tag team match, a tag team match, a one on one match that ends in like two minutes, or we get a segment. Certain stuff before they started putting the cruiserweights on pay per views. It was always one Cruiserweight Championship match that was like 10 minutes maybe. In the pre-show, you would have constant six-man tag matches with the same Cruiserweights. Like legit, it would be Tony Nese, Drew Gulak, and somebody versus Cedric Alexander and two other people. And it just, the cycle continues once people, you know, move to the championship 
uh, radar and all this other kind of stuff. The matches need to, the matches need to be better. Now on 205 Live, we had some decent, all right matches, but not no memorable kind of matches, you know. And that 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 was the uh, I don't know what's wrong with WWE why they can't have good matches with the cruiserweights on there instead of giving them just three minute matches as if it was like the as if they're jobbers. Number three, they didn't handle them right in my opinion. This is what I think. When they announced the Cruiserweights, I felt like the Cruiserweights should have had their own show and picked up the steam from that show and not be put directly on the main roster where there's the same place where Roman Reigns is on, Seth Rollins, Rusev, Kevin Owens, Chris Jericho, the list goes on, Stephanie McMahon, Mick Foley, Triple H when he wants to show up. You, you have a, a, a show that has so many main event people and more people to care about than a whole division of people that are like less than 200 pounds almost. Um, not less, um, a 205 and below, you know, you have those kind of people and nobody's really going to care about it when you have these big, uh, main event superstars that perform good matches and, and the way they handled it was wrong. See, after the CWC, you should have took the steam from that. It's easy marketing. You have the CWC. Everybody's in love with it because it's creating great matches, great everything. And you're doing all this. They shouldn't have put them on raw. They should have had 205 live become a show. Or just have whatever. I don't know if it should be live. Because we're also going to talk about 205 Live and like why it shouldn't be after SmackDown. 205 Live. The, whatever the Cruiserweight show. I'm just going to call it 205 Live at the time. I felt like they should have been directly put on 205 Live instead of Raw. And have them do their thing. Because they're their own division, right? They're their own division. Put them on their own show. Keep them away from the WWE TV. And keep them away and you will probably have a better succession because it's a show directly for the cruiserweights for storylines and then when you want to put them on pay-per-views just go back to the tv shows and it will make more and better sense because uh i'm kind of lost when some of these pay-per-view cruiserweight championship matches happen because most of them are set up on raw but a lot of them can be really set up on 205 live when they have a whole show dedicated to them that that's what wwe needs to do was it what were we on? number four the people, the the cruiserweights themselves, all these guys are talented, but I can't get behind seventy five to eighty percent of them. Most of them are very generic. I felt like you take any of them, you put some clothes on them in WWE two K seventeen, and for the moveset you pick a generic wrestling style, and boom, you have a cruiserweight. Most of these people don't have personalities, or not people we can, or are not people we can get behind. Let's see, you have. Uh, TJ Perkins, the first Cruiserweight champion, I can't get behind him. He's boring to me. He's just a guy that dabs. He's literally the stereotype of a millennial. If that's his gimmick, then I, okay, I guess if that's his gimmick, the millennial. Um, then you have who? Drew Gulak, a guy who's hard hitting. What is his character? We haven't done anything for him, and he can probably make them a lot of money as a good vicious heel. Um, you're starting to put uh, stuff into tony niece but he doesn't have any charisma he's just some guy that flexes his arm and just does some stuff like what then you have who um was it Arya davari somebody you can really build because of his brother and they tried that it's just he's just not working and he's just a hill because you know he's um you know um was it arabian you just do that just make him a hill because of that the only people with wwe or the cruiserweight division has really focused on and really made me care for is Jack Gallagher, they've really done a good job with him. I feel like Jack Gallagher is going to be like Rey Mysterio. He's going to break away from the Cruiserweight division and become his own thing due to the fact that he was the only Cruiserweight in the actual Royal Rumble. Another thing, Brian, the Brian Kendry. It was pretty easy for them to make him good because he's been in the WWE before. People know who he is. Just put him out. Give him the gimmick. He Everybody knows him for. Boom. You already have Brian Kendrick. So that's a no-brainer. Then you have uh, Neville. Neville. Somebody else that's been in WWE. Somebody we've won in the Cruiserweight division. And they waited a long time to finally put him in there. And then when they turned him heel and made him the king of the Cruiserweights. And now that he's the Cruiserweight champion, he's really successful at this time. I have to kind of shake my hand. I don't know if this is really a good like a good character now i guess rich swan he comes out and dances we know what he does but i mean he doesn't really i don't know what to say about rich swan it's like he's 
he's good enough like he has some kind of character and charisma but it's just he's like in the middle and cedric alexander i feel like is somebody they can put development into because cedric alexander is a good wrestler like his match with kota Ibushi literally changed his career everybody talks about cedric alexander from that i want to know how many people actually knew he was like in ring of honor facing moose and he was like in ring of honor for a long time before he had that match with kota Ibushi. So Cedric Alexander is somebody you can build as an underdog that will fight his way to the top. And I feel like that's what WWE could do with him. Now, I think this is another point. This is going to be my fifth point. Uh, well, first, let's do some honorable mentions. This is some little stuff I noticed that is to why they're failing. Let's get into it. So the, the first honorable mention, I guess I want to talk about um, the championship, the actual Cruiserweight Championship. This is a title that represents a whole division, and the title just doesn't scream championship to me. It's just something people put on their shoulder, and it says Cruiserweight Championship. When TJ Perkins was the first Cruiserweight Champion, I really wasn't wowed by his championship reign. It was just, oh, I'm the first Cruiserweight Champion. Oh, I dab all the time. He didn't do anything with the championship. He looked weak most of the times. He never really look dominant because if when you're the champion of a division you are the guy to be and tj perkins literally looks like anybody could beat him brian kendrick as the cruiserweight champion he was all right i guess i felt like he could have been a better cruiserweight champion because we know what brian kendrick can bring his like character where he's like i'm like the oldest guy here but i have you know knowledge because i've been in this company for a long time and um you know i have this veteran instinct to me and i have like things where I know more than you guys, and I wish he would apply that more to the championship. I felt like the championship really was just a stepping stone for him to get better as a character, and that's what I seem like. It seems like the championship is more of a stepping stone than an accomplishment, than an achievement almost, because when TJ Perkins had it, it was a stepping stone, but it really was a step down because now TJ Perkins is not really doing nothing. Kendrick is still heavily featured on 205 Live. Rich Swan, when he had the championship, he did nothing with the title. He just had it. And then Neville as the champion right now, so far so good, I guess. But if I predict, he's probably going to use the title to make himself look like a king. Honestly, I feel like Neville might save the championship because he calls himself the king. But what makes you a king without something? He has the title. Now he's officially the king. He's a man to fear because of the stuff he does, how vicious he is. Those are the, that, that, that's the honorable mention. Um, I, I don't know, man. The, I'm trying to think. What could be another honorable mention, honestly? Man, like WWE, man, the Cruiserweights, the 205 Live, that this is going to be an honorable mention. It's going to be my number five, and so I had to think about it. This might, I might not even have a number five. This is, might just be four points in an honorable mention. 205 Live needs to not come right after SmackDown Live. Now, I get it. 205 Live, you know, you have to get it hyped. You know, you make it live. I'm fine with the with 205 Live not being live at all. I'm fine with it being taped at full sale or something. The reason I say that is because you film it right after SmackDown. So the fans are already tired and drained out from a two-hour wrestling show that they just witnessed full of superstars and matches and all kind of other stuff that they uh care more about. So then when you put a show right after that, they're already tired. The first couple of weeks of 205 Live was brutal. It was brutal. Honestly, it was really brutal. I really felt like... Because people were leaving. It was empty seats. It was all of this. Now they're starting to get more involved with it. Because I guess the fans are starting to get invested in the show. But it just doesn't translate on the pay-per-views. And now we're getting to my number five. I just thought about this off the top of the dome. And it makes really sense. Number five. The number five reason why the cruiserweights are failing. Is us. You watching. Me. Everybody. We're the reason the cruiserweight division is failing. Because we don't care. See, here's the thing. When you don't care about something, it doesn't... When somebody is trying to sell you something and you don't care about it, you don't put no investment in it, it flops. And that's what happened with the Cruiserweight division. The first week they came on Raw, it was silent. Dead. The crowd was dead. The only time the Cruiserweight uh, division had got its loudest pop on Raw was when Noam Dar debuted in his home country of Ireland, I believe. Was it? Uh, no, no, not Ireland. I'm sorry. Scotland. And they went crazy for him. Then after that, it was dead silence. And it's been dead silence because we don't care. It's it's like you you um make them their own entity on Raw instead of just making them a part of Raw because 
like when you do that you make us not care we know we we it's like a sign almost it's like telling us oh they're gonna change the ropes and all this other kind of stuff oh it's time for me to go get a snack they're just gonna have some boring three minute mat tag team match that doesn't mean anything why should i care i felt like if wwe were to make it more interesting which is something they just can't do at this moment i don't know what they're gonna do with the cruiserweight division because it's failing right now and us not caring makes it worse but you can't blame somebody who doesn't care about something that isn't careable you know if, if that makes any sense it, it's like if you give us something to care about if you give us a 30 minute cruiserweight championship match on monday night raw and it's a good match we will get invested into it but as of right now we haven't got anything to really sink our teeth into for this cruiserweight division which is why it's not doing good it's failing it's flopping like lebron but those that's my reasons for this. These are my five reasons for why the Cruiserweight division is failing. Honestly, if you want me to do more wrestling discussion videos like this, let me know in the comment section below. Make sure you share the video. Make sure you like, comment, favorite. Do all that stuff to support me because I am really trying to, you know, get up there in the YouTube rankings. You know, I'm trying to do it my way and not selling my soul by doing stupid stuff. But anyway, that, that has nothing to do with it. Anyway, guys, I'm out. Hey.